wonderful Dr. Borum came and the situation had changed. It just seemed that God had sent this man for this time. But he was just so superb in the pulpit that it carried us. I didn't know that much about him but at the same time I felt as if I didn't need to. You know the, the pieces themselves were enriching and diverting and I was always intrigued, I thought, how is it that this man has such a wide, wide knowledge of all kinds of writers? They're not just a particular type of writer, you know, uh, 19th century, you know, the Victorians and the Romantics, and my, but practically anyone that put pen to paper that was worthwhile, he mentioned them and quoted them. You know, I thought, this is extraordinary. I mean, this man is not your average minister, if you like this one. This is an exceptional talent here. And, you know, at that stage, I wouldn't have used the word genius, but only with the years, I kept on thinking, this is more than your average sermon writer. This is someone who actually has a particular way of looking at the world, looking at God's action in the world through the incarnation and Jesus, and then making it come to life for us now. When he actually went on his overseas tours, when he had written many, many books, and they were published by Epworth in 1924, in 1928, in 1936. He was actually amazed at his popularity. He went to conferences and people would come up and they would recite passages from his books. When Borum arrived in Hobart, he was 35 years old and relatively energetic. But when he concluded his ministry there, he was in his mid-40s, tired and worn out. It wasn't just the drain of the war, it was the various committees and the growing number of speaking engagements he was obliged to fulfil. During my latter years at Hobart, I often revolted against the necessity of attending such a multitude of meetings. I felt it my duty, as the representative of a central church, to take part in every helpful movement in the city. I was on every commitment and invited to speak at all kinds of public gatherings. But towards the end, I grudged the incessant drain upon my time and energy. Upon arriving at Armadale, the Borums were given an enthusiastic welcome by their eager new congregation. The Armadale Baptist Church was a luxuriously appointed church which seated 500. It wasn't too long before the church was full each Sunday, with people eager to hear the preacher they had come to love as an author. Soon people who travelled from all over Australia to hear FWB marvelled that he was an even better preacher than a writer. His first initiative was to publish a syllabus of winter sermons, and call for a hundred volunteers to distribute them personally door to door throughout the district. His evangelistic fervour and his engaging preaching style further added to the growth of Armadale Baptist and his national regard as one of Australia's finest preachers. <laughs> 